please put your hands together around the world for Team Quizards! Hello everyone, thank you for coming to our graduation. <laughs> I'm Dan, over here we've got Stu and Jay as well. We also had a team member that couldn't make it, Jamie, but he also put a lot of work into this, so hello Jamie if you're watching. <laughs> so as you can see from the beautiful logo designed by Stuart just over here, we, are, we have designed Quizards, a multiplayer learning experience. So yeah, it's a multiplayer game designed for uh, learning environments, but it's not just a game. The learning aspect of it is a multiple choice quiz based on a desired curriculum. Now, on the game you're going to see today, it's just going to be maths, but in an ideal world, we'd have a teacher logging in as an admin, um, and they would decide the curriculum or whatever they want on this revision session, lesson, whatever it's going to be. Um, so yeah, after that quiz, they're going to get taken to a summary page of the, of the quiz itself, and they're going to get a score. They're going to know which um, questions they got right, which they got wrong, so they know what they're going to improve on, and yeah, what they need to put more work into. But more importantly for the game, they're going to see um, <laughs> how it's going to, how well they're going to be able to do in the game because the quiz affects their health and power in the game. So it just adds that more fun element to it. Yeah, so, and it's more, next we're going to talk about why we, we built this app. So, so we've been students for the last few months, of course, and on a previous project, we had to learn CSS. And a few of us were, were quite novice, were novices at this. So we had to find a few resources to learn. Um, and one that gave us a great like, base was uh, a game that revolved around CSS and fighting zombies. And we thought it was a really good way to you know, get the base of something before you go, you delve really deep into it. So with that in mind, we thought something similar would be a great way to encourage people to learn at home, outside of the classroom. Um, yeah, and we thought add a challenge to it. Instead of just making it something that could work um, locally, we thought let's make this a multiplayer game. So that was the, one of the biggest challenges we set at the start. And after taking a further look into the gaming industry, we found, we found a large, um, large growth in that industry in the last year. So we thought, yeah, let's go for it. Um, we didn't real realise how relevant the remote side of it was going to be as schools have closed now. But we thought this would be like, it would really work to give the students a big lift in between the real formal work that they're going to be doing during this time. Um, yeah, so we, we changed gear from the, the API and CRUD apps that we have been doing in the past. And um, yeah, we did something a little bit different. Cool, I'll pass you on to Jay, who's going to take you through the demo of the game. Nice, let's get the show on the road. Cool. So, oh technical difficulty nice so oh my god look at that styling <laughs> what has possessed this team to create such an old school stylist looking app i hear you all scream well what we saw in planning was that it tends to be the simpler games that keep players coming back for more so we've gone for a retro style complete with although not hearable at the moment maybe thankfully um eight bit music which in the unlikely unlikely case you want to turn it off is just up there um, and then for now we just have easy login button which will take you to the introduction page so this page basically sets out um, what's going to happen in the game so first you're going to be entering into a lobby then you're going to be entering into a quiz round which basically influences your character's health and spell power so the more points scored, the, the, the better you're going to do. Um, then the game will begin where you'll battle against other players. So let's begin. To the left you can see all online players 
and to the right is a live message board where all players can speak very nicely to one another with no swearing because we don't yet have a filter in place. Um, then once you're finished complimenting your rivals and are ready to hash it out, select join game to be sent to the quiz. Cool, so here we can see our time bar, we can see our score, we can see the current question and our potential answers. There's a live response of if your answer is correct or not, which adds or subtracts from your score. We know taking away a point if you get it wrong is a bit tight, but it stops people from spamming the button just getting like world's highest score ever. Oh, snuck a nice 57 in there at the end. Oh, and a 33. Go on, Dan. Top score. 11. Nice. That's a big eight, that. Lucky number eight. So you're then taken to the results screen um, where you can see what you've done right and what you've not and your score as well. Um, and here we have it, the piece de la resistance. Um, here you can see your character, you can see your health up there, you can move around on this map that Stu's created um, and you can also see, there's Sarah, go on Dan, get her. <laughs> Dan's just taking it easy at the moment, oh look. <laughs> Come on, of course, Sarah's got a shield going. I know everyone, everyone watching at the moment is on the edge of their seats as, as to who's going to win this. It's a tight one, yeah, it's actually, yeah. I tell you what, Sarah, for a first time play, you're doing very well. So it's out of the running. It's now down to Dan and... Who else is playing, sorry? Nick. Oh, Nick, go on. <laughs> there we go. go on, it's close. It's a close one. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fortunately, Dan has been banished to the Shadow Realm. And Nick is our winner. So what we come to at the end here is just a results page. And if you want another crack at it and you want to return to the lobby, press the button to return the cycle. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and if you're wondering how we did it, here is Stu to run us through that. <laughs> Thanks all. And thank you for our volunteers for helping us out there. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed uh, putting it all together. If you go to the, uh, the slides, Dan and I'll talk you through the tech stack that we used for this. Right, so um, I'll start on the left-hand side. Uh, we went for a rather unusual uh, hybrid approach uh, to our tech stack. Uh, so we've used a single-page application. Uh, it's, it's made in React, uh, but we've um, melded that with a tool called Phaser, uh, which is a tool we've never used before. Uh, it's not something that we're uh, introduced to on the course. Um, it, it's a rendering engine for uh, HTML. Uh, it's written in JavaScript, but it's fun a fundamentally different framework to what we have uh, worked with before. So it was a real learning experience to, to pick this up and, and try and get something working with that. Uh, you'll notice that there was a lot of kind of retro styling, very blocky uh, buttons and, and containers that were in use throughout. Uh, we used uh, style components to manage our CSS and keep everything nicely laid out and efficient so that we could reuse things. And uh, you'll notice here that we've actually got phaser on here twice. Uh, we've got something on the front end and something on the back end. Uh, so that was something that came out in our initial uh, design work that we did, was the architecture of how to build a game. Uh, so this is what is actually called a, an authoritative server uh, model. So whilst you see everything that's going on in the client, it's not actually running anything logical there. It's purely rendering, it's purely listening to commands. The actual game is running on the server itself. Uh, so we're not rendering anything, it's headless, uh, but it's uh, all the, the game processing, all the, uh, you know, whether you've fired, whether you've been hit, whether you've been banished, whether you've won, all of these things are happening on the server side. And we're then using Socket IO um, to pass that information back to the client uh, 60 times a second so that they can then update what's going on on their screen. So uh, this was quite a novel architecture for us. There was a lot for us to learn. 
uh, and we encountered a number of challenges uh, in that. I think the first one that we did was a uh, challenge we found was just purely the agile development process. Uh, we had a lot to learn and with these new tools it was really important that we were all working as a team uh, to, to really succeed on this. Uh, one of the first things we did in order to ensure that we have a working demo uh, demonstrable here for you today, we actually did two sprints uh, of a week long each. So the first sprint was purely the minimum viable product. It was Pretty ugly, but it worked. And then the second sprint, we sat down and we went through our user story again and really started to prioritize uh, what we should look at for that second sprint. And that kind of iterative approach really helped us to uh, put together a working solution. Other things that were quite challenging were the, uh, the, the GitHub and the version control system that we had to uh, uh, get involved in. Um, a lot of our architecture was split across the server and client and needed to be updated in tandem. And so it was really important that we uh, merged things correctly, that we adhered to best practice so that we weren't overwriting each other's changes all the time. Uh, and something else that really helped us was um, uh, design documentation and architecting things before we actually started writing any code. And I know that sounds really boring, but it was really, really helpful for us to uh, make good progress on this. Uh, in terms of the socket IO messages that were going back and forward between the client and server, we had about 100 different types of messages. So it was really important that we, um, this was documented very well, that both the, the server side and the client side teams knew, you know, even things as simple as the, the naming conventions that were going on back and forth so that we weren't, again, overwriting each other's work and everything worked first time when we, when we tried it. Um, another thing we had to learn was simply how to make a game. Uh, we've never done a game before. We've worked on very different architectures to this. And the process of making a game had to be learned from scratch. Not only the tools, such as Phaser, but how it's architected, such as things like the authoritative server model that we used. So again, that was a big learning experience for us. Um, and the final thing that was really challenging was this integration between Phaser and React. We used them in tandem uh, on the front end, and they're not really designed to work together as well. So it was a real challenge to get them working um, well together and passing information specifically between uh, the two applications. Uh, but we did quite well. Uh, the way that we uh, came about that was uh, by spiking technology early and identifying the problems early in our de development cycle as well. Uh, so we spent a good few days at the start trying to figure out, trying different libraries, trying different components to see what would work and how to get that information flowing correctly. And you know, the results you see uh, before you, it worked, worked out pretty well. Right, so thank you very much. We've got plenty more to talk about, but if you have any more questions, uh, we're, we're happy to take them. Um, we, we showed a, a, a local version running now. We do actually have a remote uh, online version available of the game uh, that you're happy to have a go at playing if you want, but we would ask you to wait until 5 o'clock. Uh, we're we're going to uh, set up the server and make sure everything's running smoothly for you then. So at 5 o'clock, knock yourself out, uh, have a go at playing the game, uh, quizards.netlify.com. Um, and yeah, happy to take any questions. Thank you much for listening.